are you your body? Well, kind of, right? But is there a line where this stops being true? How much of yourself can you remove before you stop being you? And does the question even make sense? Interesting question. Is the sound all okay for you guys? Curse you suck, duck costume next Halloween. That's a fantastic idea. I should have done that. That's brilliant. Your physical existence is cells, trillions of them, at least 10 times more than there are stars in the Milky Way. A cell is a living being, a machine made of up to 50,000 different proteins. It has no consciousness, no will, no purpose, it just is. But it is still an individual. Together, your cells form huge structures for jobs like preparing food, gathering resources, transporting stuff around, scanning the environment, and so on. If you extract cells from your body and put them in the right environment, they will continue to stay alive for a while. So, your cells can exist without you. But you can't exist without them. If we take all the cells away, there is no you anymore. Is there a line where a pile of your cells... What if consciousness isn't actually, you know? <clears throat> what if the assumption of physicalism doesn't hold true? I mean, I don't think that. I think, you know, consciousness is something that emerges from whatever our neurons are doing, maybe even some weird quantum stuff going on in the brain. I think some quantum computing combined with artificial intelligence is going to provide some interesting insights, and that's coming soon. You've got Google's uh, quantum AI lab. Uh, and, yeah, I think quantum computing is going to be a significant, you know, uh, boost to where we're heading with machine learning and artificial intelligence in general. So it's going to be very fun to see how the next 10 years play out because I think, you know, uh, Google, they're aiming for a very useful quantum computer, million qubit thing by about 2029. You've got Intel, about the same time frame. You've got a bunch of startups trying to do it even sooner than then. You've got an Australian startup called Silicon Quantum Computing trying to actually use silicon you know stuff which means we can just utilize the industry that already exists and it could come even sooner and they, they're looking pretty good they've actually developed these things called quantum simulators which is a little bit different to a quantum computer because a simulator uh, you can't reprogram it so it's it's kind of like simulating you know the actual physics quantum physics of a situation of like a molecule and things but you can't reprogram it like a quantum computer uh but anyway cells stops being random tangent new for example if you donate an organ billions of your cells will continue to live on inside someone else does this mean that a part of you became a part of another person or is this other body keeping a part of you alive or let us imagine an experiment you and a random person from the street exchange cells one at a time your body gets one of their cells their body gets one of your cells at which point would they become you? Would they ever, or is this just a very slow and gross way to teleport you? Let's make this more complicated. The image of ourselves. Good luck doing that with the brain, though. But I've heard the same argument made with the brain. If you were to replace all. If you imagine your brain, right? Now you imagine one day we can fix brain cells or fix just neurons and things in general, right? The 100 billion neurons. What happens if you replace all 100 billion neurons in your brain? Are you still you? You see what I mean? It's a very interesting question. And uh, Viva, I don't think consciousness is anything special. Yep, I think the same thing. It's just from electric signals. Maybe not just electric signals. It could be something to do with um, like the, the neural networks and the pathways the electric signals take. And they could be really complex and somehow something emerges from this that we are simply not understanding i mean look at ai it is starting to approach some things that we thought were special like creativity i guess the cat's out of the bag there it might not even be a real thing <laughs> as a static thing is untenable almost all of your cells have to die during your lifetime 250 million have died since the beginning of this video alone between one and three there goes my last couple of brain cells. Three million per second. In a seven period, 
most of your cells are replaced at least once. Every time your cell setup changes, you are slightly different than before. So, a part of you is dying constantly. If you are lucky enough to become old, you will have cycled through roughly a million billion cells. So, what you consider yourself is really just a snapshot. But sometimes, cells are broken and don't want to die, questioning the very nature of the unity of our bodies. We call them cancer. They cancel the biological social contract and become basically immortal. Cancer is not an outside invader, it's a part of you that puts its own survival over yours. But you could also argue that a cancer cell becomes another entity inside us, another being that just wants to thrive and survive. Can we but you could argue like all cells like that, right? We blame sure. it for that. A chilling cell story is that of Henrietta Lacks, a young cancer patient who died in 1951. Usually, cells only survived for a few days in the lab, making research very hard. Henrietta's cancer cells were immortal. Over the decades, they were multiplied over and over again and used for countless okay, that's interesting. research projects, saving countless lives. Henrietta's cells are still alive and overall have been grown to at least 20 tons of biomass. So there are living parts around the world. Have you guys seen the recent stuff about brain cells? Sentient brain cells in a petri dish to play Pong. It's a good game. I mean, if I was stuck in a dish. Pong is so simple that apparently anyone can play it, including brain cells in a lab. Yes, you read that correctly. Scientists in Australia have taught... I didn't even know they were in Australia when I made this. Have taught neurons grown in a petri dish. Okay. So these mini brains can sense and react to their environment using drug... Okay, okay, okay. ...world from someone who has been considered dead for decades. How much of Henrietta is in these cells? What makes one of your cells you anyway? Maybe the information contained in it, your DNA. Until recently, it was believed that all the cells in your body had basically the same genetic code. But it turns out this is wrong. Your genome is mobile, changing over time through mutations and environmental influences. This is especially the case in your brain. According to recent discoveries, a single neuron in an adult brain has more than 1,000 mutations in its genetic code that are not present in the cells surrounding it. But how much you is your DNA really? About 8% of the human genome is made up of viruses that once infected our ancestors and merged with us. Mitochondria, power plants of the cell, once were bacteria that merged with the ancestors of your cells. Very cool stuff. They still have their own DNA. Yeah, I know some things, I knew this stuff. Average cell has hundreds of them. Hundreds of little things that are not really human, but they still kind of are. It is confusing. Let's backtrack a bit. We know that you're made up of trillions of little things. You see that entering philosophy. Here we go. We're back in. Made from more little things that are constantly changing. Together, all those little things are not static, but dynamic. Their composition and condition is changing constantly. So, we might just be a self-sustaining pattern without clear borders that gained self-awareness at some point and now has the ability to think about itself through time and space, but really only exists in this exact very moment. Where did this pattern start? With your conception? When the first human arose? When life first began conquering our small planet? Or when the elements that make up your body were forged in a star? Our human brains evolved to deal with absolutes. The fuzzy borders that make up reality are hard to grasp. Maybe ideas like beginning and end, life and death. What do you guys think? Do you think um, reality is fuzzy like that? Or do you think there are some absolute fundamental truths going on? Maybe ideas like <laughs> what is fuzzy borders that make up reality like continues to ruin my life. Maybe ideas. Did you see that with the bird's head? Is like beginning and end, life and death. I'm a data scientist <laughs> and am more pessimistic than most on how close we are to AGI, but I do think it will eventually change everything. I kind of agree with you. Like, um, you know how I constantly say I have varying degrees of certainty, right? It's always changing. And so AGI and how soon it comes, like that whole singularity, even though it's the worst term, I really have no idea. I mean, I hope it's in the next 10 years. I think you could be right and it could actually be way longer who really knows you off squeak good night squeak 11 p.m so early 
what's AGI artificial general intelligence so like so like uh, something made out of maybe silicon but it's like human intelligence it can think it's like sentient I have school but I'm not sure if that's the definition uh, like I don't think the definition of AGI necessarily has sentience if that's even a real thing right maybe all humans are is AGI you know this sentience is not even a real thing you've got school yeah best get some sleep my man you have a good rest you and me are really not absolute walk nice but ideas belonging to a fluent pattern a pattern that is lost in this strange and beautiful universe the problem of who we are isn't just a question of our cells, but it's also a question of our minds. Just as our cells can be divided and separated from us, so can our very brains be divided and separated from us. While still in the skull. Click here to go to my channel and watch- We did watch this one. It was brilliant. It blew my mind as well. Split my mind in half. Maybe is a better way to put it. Um, that was another good video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one.